Looks like pretty low flow, possibly. We might be able to go and see what's going on inside to see if they ever fixed it. There's no ice build up in there. Oh, look at the sticks there. It's been higher before. But that's the good thing about this new drain. The big slots allow most of the debris and garbage just to slip right through it. Got a few sticks there. Those will likely go right through. But there's one thing the beavers probably don't realize, and they probably never will. If they go up the other side, they could easily dam this up. I don't think they would do that. And this would take way too long for them to clog. And if it ever did build a dam around the edge, it would go up and flow into the grate here where I'm standing. Actually, it looks like a lot of people have been going out on the ice. We can go out as long as we don't feel anything. This thing is probably really solid too. The other end, there's a little bit of water exposed, but that's only because that's the stream feeding it. You just got to stay away from the other edges. And look at this. There's no open air there or open water. Last time there was some unfrozen water. People thought maybe it's because the concrete was still generating heat because that's what it does as it cures. Oh yeah, this is some pretty good ice. I remember walking on this years ago. This is as far as I'm going to go. See right there is where the fisherman was. Made their hole. Still see the beaver dam is over there. They're still active at work. These other areas where you see, that might be fishermen's holes where they were fishing. That's what I hope it is, because if it's not, those are soft spots in the ice. That's probably what it is, just the way they're arranged. This was fun while it lasted, getting to unclog the old lake drain. Did it for about three years, every month or so. Although it would clog up overnight with debris if we got a big storm surge. Because this one had a trash rack. Only because the lake was originally built for carving ice out. This whole thing's a man-made dam that they built the highway on top of. It's a private pond though. Owned by some LLC that owns the old ice house. The DOT owns about 20 feet into the water here. But they can't drain it or remove the beavers because it's not their property. When they put the lake drain in, the newer one, they put a bunch of sandbags here. Yeah, I remember the reason I first started unclogging it was because it did get up to the road there and it starts flowing through underneath the bridge there. And I watched the city come out here with a backhoe that they drove probably from their... DPW office which is like not even two miles away with their backhoe they came in here they lifted up one side of the grate the other side came blasting through like a jet that was just awesome and ever since they said it was okay if I maintained it with a rake before it ever got bad again but if it ever did get up to that mark where it starts going over the road that's like this high that is way too dangerous to mess with because if you get in there and you open up a whirlpool, that could actually suck you up against it. But the deepest I ever unclogged was only like six inches on top of it. That still made an awesome whirlpool though. Six inches on top of it. Some people say that's dangerous and you could get sucked up against it. I don't really think so because that's not a tremendous amount of water pressure and it wouldn't hold you up against it unless you got an actual siphon going underneath it and that means the pipe would have to be full and it would put the pressure of all that water inside the pipe on you but when it's just trickling around the edges it's pretty difficult to create a vacuum seal with only six inches of water and the jersey barrier is the one thing they didn't do it said in their job description that was going to be removed I guess not still a nice retaining wall still got the tree to knock down the fence the time we went up there to look at that I also remember the time I climbed over the fence to look around 
almost got my pants ripped on it but now there's a clear opening we went up there to look around to see if there was any cracking or anything but there never was hopefully they filled it like they said they did let's go take a look around the other side all right let's go see what's going on inside got a nice pool here got some nice algae growing in there too kind of unusual for the winter but it only takes a little bit of thawing to get algae really growing all right got a nice styrofoam island okay almost too deep good thing i don't have to whip out the other boots just got to walk slowly in the deep area that's meant for it to slow down and let's go take a look got my lighting it's got to be slow right here so i don't over top last time i went in here to show the leaking of the joints people were saying that was super dangerous because it could easily break open that it wouldn't just break open all at once and even if it did it, I don't think it would be that big of a blast that it would push me through not that joint because these are stronger than they look they wouldn't just crumple the crumple open like a tin can but we do got some logs and stuff in here I think when this thing rages there's enough pressure to break out any kind of dam that starts to form inside Oh, that's gonna scare me when that happens. You hear that loud noise? That's people running over the manhole covers because they're not seated properly. One good sign is we don't see any gravel in here like last time. Hopefully they fixed it because they dug it up with an excavator since. It actually smells really good in here. That nice, kind of smells like the ocean when it's foggy. This culvert is longer than it looks from above. It takes a while. You can see this marker here? Before they did the construction, this was sitting around in their DOT yard for a while. And that's watermarks from being rained on that was the bottom at the time I can definitely tell it's getting shorter it's kind of crushed like an oval right here from the weight of the ground and even settling we've got a little bit of gravel right here in the pipe but that's really old by the way the slime has built up Oh, I'm losing a lot of headroom. There's a lot of gravel right here. But that's old and undisturbed. That's been like that for a while by the looks of it. This joint is completely filled in with the gravel too. Got a little bit of whirlpool action. That ain't good. You hear that? It's hollow beneath the pipe right here. I can feel just walking out. There's nothing supporting the pipe here. And that will eventually lead to a failure. We are underneath the road here. Probably not anything bad. Might just be a depression in the road eventually. But if it's enough of a depression where it breaks the pipe open, it'll definitely take many years for that to occur. But it is a possibility. A lot of gravel here. Oh, you know what it is? I think this current here is undermining right here. It might be, see that? rotation here and look at this the current just roots the seals actually no they just left out there not being neat because they concreted right here that's just sloppy work now is the moment of truth do they actually fix the leak like I said or like they said they would because I reported that but uh I already see a red flag here See how it's not tightly pushed? That'll eventually cause problems. So I can see 
ground water right there. Oh, look at the buckle right here. That's worse than last time. See the buckle of the ground kind of pushing. Oh, yeah, they did fix it. Look at that. They actually took my advice. Look at this. They put this sticky tar in here, another seal. And look at the amount of screws. They actually fixed it. I am so happy. They actually took my advice again. Look at that seal. But it looks like it already came out on the bottom, doesn't it? You see, the seal just ends. Look at it. It already failed the new repair. Yeah, I don't even think they dug it up. I think they came in here on hand and did that. But look, see those bubbles? That's causing erosion, especially when it's really, those bubbles are probably entering through the next joint, possibly. They definitely slowed the water down, but it hasn't stopped. Are those hand marks? That must have been from them. You see about a water line, that's about its max right here. Remember last time I was in here, I said, what if somebody opened that? Because they don't even have a lock on that. It would take a minute to open it. It wouldn't just open at once. It's a gate valve, not a ball valve. It would take a little time. Again, the water's a little higher than last time. I don't see any visible anything happening here, but the water's gotta be going in here to be able to make those little bubbles right there. It's gotta be entering from here somewhere. Here's some more repairs. Oh, right here, dangerous. Hear that? You can feel it bowing. There's nothing underneath here, it's hollow. It's a hollow spot I'm standing on right now. Bunch more of the screws. I don't even know if those are the right kind of screws. I honestly, oh, nope, they're not. Look at that one's already rusted. These are all probably gonna fall out and become rusty. Oh, another rusty one. Those will fail in a few years. More tar. These ones, those are probably gonna fail too. Got a little bit of a dam here. Oh, hollow, hollow. It, it's going underneath from the structure. If the water wasn't so deep, I would just go up because they don't lock that. Yeah, what I'm standing on is definitely hollow. It's just being held up by the structure. Yeah, there's water trickling beneath the pipe and that'll slowly get worse under time. But it won't end in a dangerous situation like when it was underneath the highway 100 feet. In this situation, it'll most likely cause a depression that they will spot a few years down the road if it's not fixed quicker. But something heavy could also fall into it in an instant without warning. Sinkholes are not predictable. Don't try to predict a sinkhole. The DOT didn't think they were gonna find a sinkhole when I reported it. Oh, they did. Right here is part of the, oh, that scared me when I pushed it and jumped out of the water. It's winter time. Why am I thinking of snakes? I bet these pieces here were just put in the pipe by the force of the water because before the intake structure was ordered by the DOT, they just had an open culvert shown in some of my other videos, like you see on the picture on the screen. Just some shoddy workmanship, that's what that was back there. Oh, I'm gonna stand up and have a little break.
Hopefully my eardrums don't get blown if this thing isn't seated properly. All right, now the long... Oh, oh, almost slipped. Gotta walk immediately in the center. Any off to the side will make you fall. I'm getting too used to the gravel traction, which the entire pipe doesn't have. And that gravel, you can see it's all held together with silt and even some slime. It's been sitting there for quite a while, and I doubt it'll ever move. It's not hurting anything. If anything, it helps slow the water down and decrease erosion. Oh, you heard that? That was the manhole cover, right? That would have been so loud if I was still there. It looks like my battery is not gonna die. I only had like a half an hour to charge it from zero. It's a pretty good battery though. And we've only been in here 10 minutes. It's a dive lamp. Unfortunately, I can't send a link to it because it was bought on eBay from somebody who didn't want it. So I'm not really sure exactly where it came from. But my newer dive lamp is better. I just use this one because it has an easy camera mount on the top of it. The other one is made for a GoPro. This one's, you can basically put anything that has the camera screw on it. And we're moving about the same speed as the stick. There's definitely concrete dust and other junk in the air. So this stuff here, as I walk by, I'm stirring it up because I can feel it in the back of my throat. Breathing in some dust. Kind of left to the side. Now this is the slow part. I don't want to get soaked in the boots. So I got a long drive after this. Oh, had a little spill, just a little mark. Gotta try to walk slower. And when I get out, we're gonna just take a look at the outfall of the old one that's been filled. Gotta really slow it down here. Shut my lights off. This even looks like it's put together like garbage, see? How it all came apart. Cause they, the rocks they put next to it is like slowly destroying it. Slowly step out. Yes, I made it without getting soaked. Ooh. Got some good snow here. This snow fell a few weeks back. It looks so barren as the heavy snow has knocked down all the swamp plants for the year. Remember how bad the old drainage structures were? They put new storm drains in at the top with their project. There used to be these nasty corrugated ones that were all kind of failing. Ooh, got some, a couple of mallard ducks. It looks like deer tracks. The deer have been out here to see. Oh, is that the same one? Got a tiny little island. Oop. That thing's never gonna run again with that much concrete in it. You can see some minor sagging. That sagging there is just, looks like it contracted as it hardened because you don't see it around the edge. If it was around the entire edge, that would mean they didn't clean the silt out of it first and it's slowly settling into it. That does not appear to be the case.
We've got the moon coming out. All right, time to go. I gotta go pick up a dozen frozen mice for my corn snake. I don't feed live, well, live food to the snake because there's always a chance that the mouse will bite the snake's eye out or injure it somehow. And you don't want to have a blind snake. Snakes are miserable creatures when they're blind, especially when they are molting their skin and they can't see you. They will often bite you, especially if your hand smells like a mouse. I've had that happen before. But if the snake actually sees it's your hand, it won't bite. Mine's pretty tame. But if you just feed it a mouse, then you try to pick it up with your hand still smelling like it, it doesn't know it's your hand, it just smells a mouse and it sees your shadow. And here we got the other culvert that was not in the budget to fix along with the project. They said that one's got a probably another 20 years on it. The corrugated culvert has a 20 year lifespan to begin with. That's what they estimate. This thing's probably been there already 40 years. Probably the same age as the lake drain which was put in in the 60s. Look at that piece of junk. Granted it's not flowing much and it doesn't look like it flows much based on the erosion. And it probably won't cause big hazard. It'll Because there's not much flow, it'll start off as a depression in the road, which they'll catch. All right. Time to get up and out of here. Hope this video was interesting. Thanks for watching. Definitely looks like a lot of fishermen come in here. Look how packed down the snow is. I usually park across the street there, which was kind of stupid today because the snowpack over there is in the shade. It's almost a foot thick. Those are my tracks there. I went in there and I believe if I would have stopped my wheels, I would have got stuck. I like drifted as I spun around and I used the same pack tracks to get right back out. It worked perfectly. I believe I would have been out there shoveling if I would have stopped my wheels. All right. There we got some mice, got nine of them. Got a big rat there. I asked them for 10 crickets. They gave me like a hundred of them for the same price. That's good. There's the culvert frog. We rescued this one almost two years now inside a culvert. It was in the middle, sitting in the water, and it would have froze to death as soon as we got deep into the winter because it couldn't hibernate in the pipe and if it left it would have froze if it sat there like i said the cold would have got in it's doing awesome it's probably quadrupled its size it looks so bad at first but it loves this tank with this pothos is invasive every few months i cut half of it back and it just keeps on growing i'm going to throw all the crickets in here at once and because there's so many hiding spots they'll survive in here for over a month, it'll this frog will slowly pick them all off. I don't even bother trying to save the crickets anymore. I just throw them all in because it takes the frog a while to hunt them all. Adding some calcium to the crickets. Always want phosphorus free because the crickets already contain phosphorus. Any crickets the frog doesn't immediately eat, they'll clean that off themselves. I'm gonna shake that up really good. Get it all over the crickets, and now I'm gonna dump them in the tank. Oh, that's a ton of them. Look at them go. Let's go see what the frog's up to.